so welcome to probably the most exciting part of your day. This is the track introductions. Um, I want to thank you all for coming to track introductions. Um, I, I, this is actually, though, I think, one of the most interesting tracks of the conference, if I say so myself. It temporarily stops being the most exciting track of the conference when I give talks in other tracks. Uh, the first which is at 12.05 in the uh, Experiments and Extension track. But apart from that, this is a fantastically exciting track um, because it talks about two things that maybe people have heard of before. I don't know. Um, anyone heard of uh, containers? I, containers? Yeah? <laughs> Great. It's good to have so many garden fans in the room. Um, uh, or maybe serverless, right? Serverless is this new technology. I think it's really interesting because we find ourselves in between at Cloud Foundry these two worlds, right? Uh, I think Cloud Foundry was serverless before serverless was really a thing. You know, just push code, let the platform scale it, all that stuff. Uh, but it was also using containers before containers uh, were a thing and before we knew that they were going to be quite as exciting as it turned out that they were. Um, so now we have CF container runtime. We've got all these new features. We've got the new serverless abilities in the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, and this track hopefully will situate Cloud Foundry between these uh, pieces. Um, so my name is Dr. Jules. Uh, this is Bosky. And uh, welcome to the track. We're going to talk you through a little bit of what we have planned for you. Sure. Thank you, Jules. So, um Again, welcome to the crack. Uh, my name is Boschke. Uh, I work within VMware as a product marketing manager. Um, uh, Jules and I had real fun building this track out. Um, and if you are already using Cloud Foundry or you're familiar with Cloud Foundry or you're just getting started, I think one of the questions that at least I had was like, you know, Cloud Foundry under the hoods does use containers. Uh, why is this new container track all of a sudden, right? So um, I was trying to answer that question in my head when I first thought about Kubernetes and containers and Cloud Foundry and, you know, where does all this fit in together? And um, I think a lot of the sessions today are focused a little bit around that. We have some business use cases uh, where I think a couple of folks, at least from the containers, uh, you know, so today will be the containers track, and there are certain sessions that we'll go through and talk about how people are using that. In my mind, at least, you know, from what I've seen and spoken with customers, um, can, kind of, you know, if you're already using Cloud Foundry and if you want to use containers, which is just, you know, very deep level stuff if you're already a Cloud Foundry user, uh, one of the use cases uh, that I think is heavily, um, the, you know, something that the business have seen uh, used uh, is kind of this mixed media approach to building applications. So you might have an application that is constructed using a lot of the Cloud Foundry elements, but then there might be certain common functionality that you don't really have to recode every time using Cloud Foundry, and you can use some of the existing containers that are out there and just leverage them, um, you know, um, without having to code a lot of that. And that's where I feel like you, you know, Cloud Foundry container runtime kind of fits easily and right next to uh, uh, Cloud Foundry itself or the PaaS platform. And I think Jules has a great talk lined up for serverless and what that means. <laughs> so I hope you all have a great time uh, with these tracks. Uh, nothing else uh, other than Garden Forever. Um, uh, I hope you enjoy this track. I, I, I think it's uh, really come together really, really nicely. So I hope you all enjoy it. <laughs> 